Logan Keevan, the winner of the Train with Kai Green contest for 2013, is about to get a glimpse at a higher level of training. Logan has been an avid bodybuilder for the past three years after recovering from a severe head injury. As they begin their leg training session today, Kai feels Logan might not be prepared for the level of intensity that Green regularly brings to his workouts. The huh. longest, meanest thing you got. The longest, meanest thing? If you can do, yeah. Nah. Why not? Come on. Because number one, you don't know what you're asking for. I, I, that's the point. I don't want to know. I just want to do it. Right. How long have you been training? Three years. Three years. Now, I've, been, I've been training since I was uh, 11, but just doing strictly bodybuilding for three mm -hmm. years. Good news. There are steps toward getting anywhere, you know, in life, there are steps. You have to understand that there's some skills today that as you are only training for three years, that you're not expected to have that a seasoned professional. Will. Oh yeah. So with, well, with, let me with, rephrase it then. Huh? Within, within what you would think my three year boundary would be, I want you to push me to uh, at least a little bit beyond that three-year boundary to let me experience something, something new, something that, uh, that you think would be like a wise yet suitable workout. Well said, well said. Even though Logan is eager for a challenge today, it wasn't that long ago when it seemed as if he would never be able to engage in rigorous physical activity again. Several head injuries sustained while playing football threatened his future as an athlete. Pretty much I got a series of concussions. And after the third one, I saw for the second time a black circle in my view. And that freaked me out because I was like, oh gosh, am I going blind? I don't know what this is. So I told my, my school nurse who apparently thought it was a big deal for me to have three concussions. And I was rushed to the emergency room where I was told that I cannot um, participate in contact sports anymore. And I remember that night I was just crying. As soon as you told me that, I was just sitting there crying in the emergency room. I couldn't exercise, I would sleep, as long as I was mentally capable of staying in my bed, because I didn't want to leave my bed. That's when I found bodybuilding. And when I first looked up that YouTube video and I looked up bodybuilding, I found the bodybuilding monster video with Kai Green. It had Kai Green walking out of a gym in the city with his big gym bag and his red muscle meds hoodie. And I said, wow, like, look at that guy. Like, is that possible to do that? <laughs> what matters most at this time is what you say. You know, you are in the driving seat and your training is a conversation with yourself. Hopefully today, if nothing else, I would like to put some things in your mind that help you think more clearly about what you're doing going forward when in the gym training. Should you be put in touch with something that may be a little bit challenging? Absolutely. You know, but the challenge doesn't come from me. The challenge comes from you, you know? Personally, I've looked at lifting as like that emotional retreat. Um, it's like a place I can just get away and get in tune with myself. And from that, I've now loved that experience so much and continue to love it. And that is what has inspired me to want to be where you're at. I want to be on your level so that I can do this as a career. Wow, there is so much that you just said that uh, I can definitely identify with. The beauty about this thing is, is that you can start wherever you, from wherever you are. So you're off to a great start. If this contest was for any, to me, for me to meet any bodybuilder would have been caught. Because to me, he's like, the ultimate underdog. 
in his YouTube video, he says like, you have to save yourself. And during my concussion time, I listened to that video and I was sitting in my bed, like, like, like in tears, like almost all the time. And I heard him and those words, like you have to save yourself. And I was like, no one else can get me out of this situation right now. Like this is up to me, like for me to make that change. It's like you have to save your own life. Nobody's going to be able to save it for you. Kai unintentionally was like a direct motivation to me. Like he was telling me that. Okay, so let's get it. We're going to start with a basic crunch and we're going to move on from there. You ready? Let's go. One, two, four, two, 39, contract, 49, 50, good news. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on our side, pelvis on the side, right? Now I'm gonna reach over with my fingertips. I'm feeling for a muscle contraction. Now I'm gonna reach for my external obliques. I'm going to stretch and contract. Stretch and contract, 12, contract, 20. Now, from here, I'm gonna stretch, bend my knee, one, one, two, three, articulate the movement, four, ten, all right, gonna turn over, same moves apply on the other side, here, ten, your mind is here, eleven, make this harder, let's go, twelve, let's go, thirteen, let's go, Eight, that's why I'm poking you, look at hard, nine. Flex this, flex this, 10, good. All right, dude. flat on your back, buddy. Good Lord, bottom and up one, good job. 20, excellent, now, left elbow, out to the left side. My right knee goes out to the right side. I'm looking for a line that stretches across my body from elbow, left elbow to right knee, and I'm gonna squeeze. Two, three, twenty. Other side, right elbow, left knee. One, two, sixteen, fifteen, seventeen. Okay, good. Eighteen. What I want you to do is squeeze this. Flex this as you reach over, yes. Don't just do the movement without contracting them. Feels good. See, yes, this is what you need. 20, good. Stay away from empty movements. You want every movement you make to count. All right, because every movement has a purpose. So we finish that, all right. We go back to the beginning. To start off with the ab workout, uh, that was, the most difficult to have workout I've probably ever done in that short amount of time because he was just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And I usually do like one of those huge sets for him and then I take a break and then I'd repeat it. But he just repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. And every time I'd, I'd not know how many reps he was gonna do. And for, for the crunches especially, he would get to 25. I'd be like, okay, maybe it's 30. And then he'd get to 30, like 31, 32. And I'd be like, oh gosh, okay, I guess we're going to 50. So let's go. Open up all the way, let's go. Six, open up all the way, let's go. Eleven, give me one more. Twelve, back to the beginning. Three, four. I've always gone with sort of like the Dorian Yates approach. You go in the gym, you get it done, you do all your workouts, like 45 second to a minute breaks, and then you're out. But then Kai took that same intensity, but just did it longer, and I wasn't used to that. And so that hour and a half mark went by and I was like, okay, we've been doing stuff really solid and we haven't even started legs. This stuff is really, really, really critical for you to be aware of when you're thinking about training your legs. Don't think you just walk into the gym and okay, I'm doing leg day, so now I'm gonna go and just pack on the weight and try to you know, just start squatting because they tell me to squat. In order to be able to train your legs to grow, you have to be in command of your instrument. The only way to be in command of it is to learn how to feel it, connect with it, you know? What are your leg muscles, you know? So you create a mental connection by stretching each and individual leg part before you train? Absolutely. How yes. long does that usually take? 
Well, you know what? If you were trying to become a good basketball player or a good tennis player or a good um, baseball player, how long would you have to practice? How much time would you have to allocate for practice? That's true because I never thought about it, but this is the practice and that's the action as opposed to the practice for baseball is practicing and then the action is playing baseball. It's very true. See, a lot of times people say, oh, I want to be a professional bodybuilder, but aren't really aware of all the things that go into it. You know, it's like seeing a football player score a touchdown and think, oh, man, I love the, the press and the accolades that it looks like when you score a winning, a winning play. But what needs to be realized is all of the effort an application of work and thought that goes into the behind the scenes long before the brilliant plays are made. Same with you bodybuilding. Know? Like, you see on stage, but that's not what you look like year round. You gotta plan for it and work hard for it. And this is where you pay. This is where it starts, right here. You know? When I was a kid, there used to be a television show called Fame. And on it, uh, there was a this uh, TV personality back in the 80s named Debbie Allen. And she had this really cool monologue that used to play every time they opened up. And she said, you got big dreams? You want fame? Well, fame costs. And right here is where you start paying the sweat. And you are sweating right now, and we're just going through some basic stretches and a warm-up. Absolutely. Um, so it does cost, and everybody pays their price to get where they're trying to go. So if you are, willing to pay, if you're willing to work, if you're willing to stay committed, then there is a payday for it, you know, and the payday will come. Okay, so strong fundamentals, training legs. Legs always start, always start with calves. To me, start with calves. Reason why I say this is because there used to be a time when I first started training, I thought my legs were a reflection of my training and my training was a reflection of how I thought. Because I've spent so much time and effort invested in squats, leg extensions, this, this and this for quads, I ended up developing legs that had great quads but hamstrings that were inferior in development to my quads and then calves that were even far behind the, the both of them. All right, here we go. I break this up into three segments. Toes in, heels out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I turn my heels in, toes out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, and then parallel. In order to balance my physique, I had to start thinking about addressing the areas that were behind. So in this case, I adopted the idea of training my calves first. And even to this day as a professional bodybuilder, I still think along those lines. I still train my calves first. So for me, my approach to training legs starts with my calves. So on a leg day, I'll turn around and I'll start with three movements for calves after my warm up and after I do abs. Even after the first calf exercise, I immediately felt the deterioration from the warm up, from the long uh, exercise warm up with the back, the chest, the abs, the cardio. So as soon as we hit those calves, I was already feeling that burn, that like skin tight burn uh, in my calves. Like, okay, this is the first exercise. How's this going? And I was like, whatever, just do it. This exercise is key. It's a key fixture. You gotta, gotta do these with, with conviction. Five, six. Oh, what are you, John claude Van Damme? Believe it or not, a lot of times we as bodybuilders don't think that flexibility is very important, but it is. Seven, your mind is here. Slow it down, slow it down. I like this right here. 
the best in the business, the best of all time in any endeavor, are not people that go about it haphazardly. The hunt is over. If you've been searching for the best protein, look no further than Muscle Meds Carnivore. Carnivore protein gives your muscles the nutrition they need with our unique, easily digestible beef protein isolate. Now in five delicious flavors. The hunt is over for the best protein in bodybuilding, Carnivore.